Welcome back to Lehigh Tutoring. Uh, today I'm going to do some, really some multivariable calculus, some second order derivatives, uh, partial derivatives in fact, and uh, let's get started. So a friend of mine had a question and it's whether or not, or no, uh, to, to determine um, the maxima, minima, or saddle points for a given function f of x, y. So the function is um, f of x, y equals x cubed minus y cubed minus 2x, y plus 6. Man, I really fell off the line here. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to do some partial derivatives to get the uh, critical points. Right, so the partial derivative of f with respect to x is going to be 3x squared minus 2y. Okay, now the constant's obviously going to go away, right? And if you're taking derivative with respect to x, that has to go away because y is a constant with respect to x. And then f of y, or f, excuse me, f, uh, f's partial derivative with respect to y would be negative 3y squared minus 2x. Now, again, with critical points, you got to set these suckers to 0. So it's going to be 3x squared minus 2y equals 0. And negative 3y squared minus 2x equals 0. Now, what I'm going to do in the second equation is I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 1. And so what I'm going to get is a change of signs. I'm going to name this guy equation 1 and this guy equation 2. And um, in equation 1, okay, I'm going to isolate it for y because it's so much easier to isolate for y. And so if you isolate it, you're going to get 3 over 2 x squared. And then I'm going to take that and I'm going to substitute it into the other equation. So it's going to leave me with 3 times 3 halves of x squared all squared plus 2x equals 0. Okay, <laughs> so if you simplify this, you end up getting uh, 9 over 4x squared times 3, that's going to be 27 over uh, 4, x to the 4 plus 2x equals 0. What I'm going to do to simplify this guy is I'm going to multiply both sides by 4. Okay, So what that will effectively do is that will get rid of the 4 on the bottom over here, and that will convert the 2 over there to an 8. Okay, Now I've got a common factor, right? I've got an x and an x over there. So I'm going to remove, uh, not remove, but factor out an x, and I'm going to get 27x cubed plus 8. Now this is great because I've got a cubed term here, the x cubed. 27 is a cubed as well, as well as 8, right? So I've got to solve these two guys. So either x is 0 or this giant thing over here is equal to 0, okay? x is 0 or 27x cubed plus 8 equals 0. Now, if I end up isolating for x, right, what that'll uh, give me is that x cubed equals negative 8 over 27. And these are perfect cubes. So if I take the cubed root of both sides, right, that'll leave me with 2 on the top and 3 on the bottom. Okay, so I just figured out my two x coordinates. Now, what do I do to get the y? Well, I have an equation. Right? So um, if I plug in x equals 0 into this equation, I should get y equals 0. Right? Because 0 squared is 0 times 3 is 0, so you get 0. So one of the points, a critical point, is 0, 0. Now I gotta figure out the other one. So I gotta take negative 2 thirds and I gotta plug it into there. So y equals 3 halves of negative 2 over 3 uh, squared. 
And now that guy is going to be 3 halves of 4 over 9. I can cancel a factor of 2 in the top here with a factor of 2 in the bottom. Cancel a factor of 3 in the top over here, a factor of 3 in the bottom over there, and I end up getting 2 over 3. So the other point is negative 2 thirds and 2 thirds. So these guys are my critical points. Now I've got to figure out which one is a uh, saddle, which one is a relative uh, or a local uh, minima and a local maxima. Now they give you a little function right, that you can use. And the function is essentially the following. It is a function that depends on the, uh, the critical point, AB. So if I have a general critical point, AB, right, the function goes second order derivative of f with respect to x at that critical value, or at that critical point, times the second order derivative in y at that critical point, minus the, the derivative that's commutative xy at a b uh, squared. So if this thing turns out to be positive, then I've got a local minimum at a b. If it's a maximum, so excuse me, if it's, if it's, oh, there, there are two conditions. Okay, so if d is greater than zero and f x x um, is greater than zero, then you've got min. Okay, a minimum. If d is greater than zero and f um, x x is less than zero, then you got a maximum. Uh, if d is less than zero, saddle point. Okay. So let's figure it out. First of all, we need these second order derivatives, right? We don't have them right now. I've got fx equals 3x squared minus 2y, right? So let me rewrite that. 3x squared minus 2y. Let me just make sure I got it. 3x squared minus 2y, great. And then the other guy is negative uh, 3y squared minus 2x. Okay. So fxx equals 6x. Okay. And fyy equals negative 6y. fxy is going to be negative 2. Okay. So now we can put together our functions. So d, right, um, of xy is going to be 6x, okay, times negative 6y uh, minus um, negative 2 all squared. Now this is going to be negative 36xy, okay, minus 4. So now all I have to do is plug in x and y, okay. Now the two critical points were 0, 0, and negative 2 thirds, 2 thirds. So if I plug in 0, 0, then this term vanishes, right? It's going to go away. And I'm just going to be left with negative 4, which is less than 0. So that means that 0, 0 is a saddle point. Uh, my last guy is uh, a little bit more complicated than that. So let's do d of negative two-thirds, two-thirds. Let's see if I could squeeze this in. So negative 36, and if I multiply these two guys together, which is what it's asking me to do, then I'm going to get negative 4 over 9. Okay. Two negatives make a positive. So that's going to be nothing but positive. They cancel each other. Okay. Um, let's not forget to take away 4. Uh, also, I've got 36 divided by 9, right? So I can take out a factor of 9 in the top and the bottom. I'm left with 4 in the top. 4 times 4 is 16 minus 4. 
16 minus 4 is 12, greater than 0. Okay, so it's either a local mi min or a local max. To figure it out, to figure out the answer, all we have to do is see what the sign is on fxx. Well, i got to plug in an x value of negative 2 thirds, right? So that means that this guy is going to be 6 times negative 2 thirds. And we don't have to evaluate this, really. It's going to be negative, right? So the point negative 2 thirds, 2 thirds is going to be a local max. So again, you have negative 2 thirds, 2 thirds being a max and 0, 0 being a saddle point. Thanks for watching.